Enlightenment is the rectification of consciousness in human beings, where the subconscious mind becomes unified with the momentary conscious experience. And all memories expand to include every subconscious feeling that you didn't have that would be an accurate emotion generated as a reflection of the present moment circumstances of every moment in your life. In addition, every single thing that you held in your imagination during the memory itself, including vision, including the idealized architecture of another person, including the onset of triggers, including everything, including the future from your perspective where you borrowed the idealized individual and the confabulated memories that spun into this three-dimensional architecture that was used as a decision-making apparatus in the avoidance of abandonment. Your brain chooses a lesser trigger like not enough. And so the self-deception is the bifurcation of the consciousness into a subjective reality where the sympathetic nervous system has not just saved experiences from childhood, it has tentacles in your mind to actually activate neuronal pathways that bring into existence the same emotional states that were present when the fight or flight mechanism programmed itself. And so psychology cannot be a field of study that's merely philosophical, but it has to envelop the neurological activity associated with emotions, associated with the recollection of past paradigms trapped within the sympathetic nervous system that innervates every single corridor of the mind. And so narcissistic personality disorder is due to the sympathetic nervous system saving the emotional reality of a baby whose parent yelled at the other, and this immature brain did not have the cognitive power of interpretation. And so the sound became the outside world. And the emotional impermanence of the child, who has reflective emotions to induce a caregiving bond, by reflecting negative emotions as a mild form of punishment, inducing the mother to want to make the baby happy, then the baby becomes happy. And then the mother is rewarded for coming correct where you see mothers with babies with cognitive impairment that do not reflect emotions, develop postpartum depression, and increase the likelihood of fail to, failure to thrive because the mother will become depressed and unable to connect with the baby or make it happy or see it suffering. And so the emotional realities of human beings and animals track with their physical development where communal emotions are not there but you see, the narcissist then starts to gain consciousness in a world where there's already a pervasive survival state of all reality. An undiscernible threat blocks the experience and expression of normal emotions. And so the narcissist did not have a normal childhood where they had consciousness and creativity and dreaming. In fact, many narcissists, some of which do not have the ability to visualize things because they live in a fear-based reality where absent the access to emotions, they then learn cause and effect. But because they're emotionally influenced by the emotions of others, they learn behaviors that would embody emotions in other people that they don't themselves experience, but they observe the cause and effect of. And so they build a Rolodex of emotional behavior that lacks the emotion you'd associate with it. And they live with the pervasive fear associated with the affliction that they experience simply because the architecture of this pervasive fight or flight state that they never leave has stored the emotional impermanence of babies. Those neuronal patterns become the foundational basis of the external experience of narcissists and the need for supply is because the short duration emotions that depend on the emotional affect of others to be interpreted and processed to generate positive emotions are equally influenced by the negative emotions of people. And so they do not have the ability to handle the stress of the negative emotions of others, often punishing it. And so they live in a state of victimhood by default, simply being afflicted by the emotions of others. 
And so their subjective world is very different than that of the people pleaser who had their fight or flight reaction after two or three years of conscious freedom, retaining access to the higher dimensions and cognitions associated with love, associated with creativity, associated with wanting to do good for other people. And so the people pleasing type at five years old had developed a me. And what this caused was an inwardly facing fight or flight mechanism where the fight or flight obliterated the emotional environment of the child. And as they looked within to try to discover what's wrong with me, as the adrenaline surged, like a drug-induced state that's never been experienced before, the first time the beta receptors had been flooded with adrenaline, they went looking for what was wrong. And as they noticed their emotional states, not there, the, the security of the parents gone, abandonment, they continued to stimulate the sympathetic nervous system causing a profound state of confusion, dissociative experience, a paralysis where the fight or flight mechanism goes haywire simply because there's nothing actionable that can be done about the emotional states that are falsely being attributed to the cause of the fight or flight. And the cause was an arbitrary sound, the parents yelling in the other room. And so the first fight or flight reaction of all human beings defines a subjective reality. And so as the child at five is looking within to try to figure out what the something is wrong and noticing all the missing emotions, this continues to escalate the fear until it reaches a crescendo. The fear of death is so powerful and profound and the cognitive dissonance is near total where awareness of the external reality becomes a state of confusion and dissociation where brokenness due to the paralysis, the inability to act simply because the awareness of the external world is blocked. And so this dissociative state of stress is attributed to the missing emotions. And so the genesis of sadness, the genesis of any of these emotional states as reactions stimulates the something's wrong that causes the cascade of observation of internal experiences where the child now will attribute whatever happened arbitrarily to their own deficiency, where the not good enough is due to the fear, where the severe abandonment anxiety is due to the security within the household being violated by this arbitrary activation. And this creates a malformation of the sympathetic nervous system that then ends up having relationship dynamics due to devaluation the internalization of a trigger, I'm not enough, is what you see later in life. And this could become borderline or just people pleasers. But what this does is the immense fear is then mitigated by this analytical process where every single child will think they need to be perfect. If I'm perfect, this won't happen. And so this need to be perfect is now entangled within the sympathetic nervous system as a pattern recognition device. And now the child, looking at the parents in this state of paralyzing fear, has imprinted the parents within paradigms of fight or flight reactions, where being not enough for the mom and dad is the cause of this experience from the interpretation of a confused five-year-old who's dissociated due to the tentacles of the sympathetic nervous system, injecting norepinephrine to block the cognitions, putting the child into a fight or flight state of tunnel vision where observational awareness was obliterated and the need to analyze reality to figure out how to be perfect for this moment so it'll never happen again became the paradigm of how. And the Adam and Eve moment of both the narcissist and the people pleaser has just been described in total scientific detail and perfection. And the modality to escape is the truth will set you free. That is a malformation of the sympathetic nervous system. And that is why I've dedicated my life to the salvation of mankind, where it's now science and it's now fact.